Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our first Sunday in Advent. I'm going to ask our folks online who appear on this computer, but not on this computer, to see if they can hear me okay. Wonderful, Ryan, and thank you very much for your thumbs up. Hello, uh, Teresa, nice to see you too. I'm glad you joined us. For Advent One, uh, one of our vestry members, Pat Tilly, and I just finished lighting candle number one uh, in our Advent candle here this morning. Uh, you know, we always like to uh, begin our service with a chance to say hi to your neighbor, so please ask your neighbor what is their favorite Thanksgiving leftover? Their favorite Thanksgiving leftover. And you guys can put it in the chat box, and I'm guessing that if it's your favorite, it's, it doesn't exist anymore. Martin, what is yours? I'm sorry, Your favorite Thanksgiving leftover? Oh, it's going to be the pumpkin pie. Is there any left at your house now? It's absolutely gone. It's absolutely gone. <laughs> Doctor, how about you? Same. Same. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Mine is still the cranberries and turkey. It's still the cranberries. Is there any left at your house? Yes. Oh. Oh my gosh, good for you. How about for you, Brian? You haven't gotten to it yet. No? A good turkey sandwich. A good turkey sandwich. Okay, let's see if anybody's put anything in the chat. Looks like uh, Ryland, Ryland says it's the stuffing. And Ryland, I will go with you this morning and I will say the same thing. It's my favorite. Uh, and there's still a little bit left. I don't know how that happened, but I think one of us in the house is on the diet, so it's not, not going as quick as we can. We're particularly excited this morning because we have at the 10 o'clock service four baptismal candidates. Uh, we're glad that the families are with us. It's Sylvia, Jennifer, Brooklyn, and a little baby named Charlie who will receive the sacrament of baptism later on. And a thank you to all of you who turned in your pledge cards in November. If you uh, meant to do so but didn't, you can use the pledge sheets on the back table in the narthex, drop them in the offering plate. If you want one um, uh, and you're online, you can find the pledge card on a link on our homepage at St. David's. Just Google St. David's Southfield. Um, our online friends can also find this morning's bulletin by following the link in the chat box, and we invite you to submit your prayer requests also. Uh, we're delighted to have you here this morning and excited for what God is doing in our midst as we start off this new year, Advent 1. Thanks for being with us. Also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armor of light. Now, in the time of this mortal life in which your Son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our first lesson is from the Hebrew scriptures and the book of the prophet Jeremiah, who writes about the coming of the Messiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. 
In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. May your word dwell in us. And bear much fruit to your glory. Please join me as we pray Psalm 25, alternately by half verse. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your companion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Glorious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right and teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Our second lesson is from the Christian scriptures and St. Paul's letter to a small church in the Greek city of Thessalonica, where he thanks God for the believers there and prays for them. <clears throat> How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. May your word dwell in us. And bear much fruit to your glory. The Holy Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will think from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, Stand up and raise your heads, because redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for themselves and know that summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, and that they catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place, and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Friends, our centering prayer, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, may your will be done through me. You may be seated. Well, good morning once again, everybody. Hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving and nice to see the lions uh, not served up as turkeys once again this year. And of course, for you Michigan fans, 
we understand why you may have an unexpected bounce in your step this morning. Um, we're so excited that our baptismal candidates are here walking um, with us in this journey that we are on. And I'd like to start this morning with a story from my backyard. There's a pine tree. There's a majestic West Himalayan spruce, and it faces a constant battle. Each summer, the bright green big-leafed kudzu vine, with whom it shares unfortunate proximity, makes itself known. This invasive kudzu vine is a deliberate and determined nemesis that if it had its way would creep over, around, and fully consume not only the Himalayan spruce, but the cedar and the yew and every tr other tree and bush and plant in the entire backyard. So one of my regular summertime jobs is to arm myself with an arsenal of big and small clippers and cutters, and I prune back that kudzu into submission. Would that there was a chemical or a technique I could enlist to make a permanent dent, but I would pay for that dearly as Mother Nature seems to have created this backyard ecosystem as beautiful and hardy as can be with a bit of drama in its DNA. Will the spruce tree win out? Will the kudzu vine be the victor? Much is dependent on the gardener which is me and you, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. But for now, Happy New Year, everybody. Today, of course, first Sunday of Advent, beginning of what is known as the church year. Today, we begin our four-week march up to Christmas, December 25th, with all its festive frivolity, as we celebrate the coming of Jesus from heaven to earth to be born as an infant in our midst. But first, let us consider our Bible readings for this morning. They were a bit dark, weren't they? Especially that gospel reading. Not quite in keeping with the lighthearted, gratitude-filled, feel-good Thanksgiving message of two days ago. Instead, we heard stern and dire warnings and descriptions of the end of the world. Signs in the sun and the moon and the stars. I've heard it's even more dangerous than Black Friday. <laughs> and we hear readings like this on the first Sunday of Advent every year. Why? Because today we begin this season that leads up to the commemoration of Jesus' first coming as a baby born in Nazareth with an eye on Jesus' second coming, and which, which we look forward to with hope and with promise. On that day, there is talk of great danger. Nature is in turmoil. Nations are confused. People will faint with fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world. Yet amidst these dire and looming threats, did you notice Jesus' attitude as he describes these things? Jesus is nonplussed as he says, be on guard. Let your hearts not be weighed down. Be alert. Jesus describes a threat, and then he describes how he's not really bothered by it. Nor should we be. Jesus is calm. Jesus is confident. He remains steadfast. He remains strident, trusting in what God is up to in the world. Friends, the comparison to the world outside these doors does not go unnoticed. You don't need a preacher to tell you that we live in a crazy, unpredictable, and scary world. There are widespread existential perils that threaten to take over the garden. They're fast-growing, they're invasive, and they're potentially deadly, as any garden vine could be. After church today, we're going to welcome one of our longtime members, a University of Michigan sociologist, to lead us in our fall book discussion. It's on that book, White Poverty. Yes, there are many more white people who are poor in this country than people of color. And by poor, it's not just the 9 to 11 percent of the population we regularly hear about who make $15,560 a year or less. And that figure for many of us is astoundingly low. Anthony, I know you work very closely on a daily basis with this population. Instead, consider the percentage of people who say they could not pay an unexpected bill of $400. Can you guess what that number is in this country? If you're asked, can you pay a bill of 400 bucks and it comes out of the blue, it's due at the end of the month, what percentage of Americans do you think say, oh, I can't do that without borrowing money? Anybody want to guess? 43%. 43% of Americans 
Given that Jesus spent so much time talking about poverty, Jesus spent so much time, he was living among the impoverished. The church needs to address it as well, which we do daily. We do it with our food pantry. We do it with our planning group. We do it with so many outside activities. I'm so proud of this church and how we refuse to turn a blind eye towards the poor because we all understand how the weeds of self-interest and greed have crept in to make our society less just, less fair, less caring, where 80% of the wealth in this country is now owned by 1% of the people. Yet we gardeners need not stand idly by. We know how to chop down vines. We know how to beat back those threatening forces. And it is with the power of God both in and around us. Yes, let's bring that to our world. Many of us have come to church this morning weighed down with our own worries. We are facing big challenges, big changes, maybe big threats to our health, our schooling, our careers, the direction of our nation, and we're very confused over this. There are vines out there, and there are vines that seek to strangle and take over peaceful gardens. We understand that our gardens, our lives, as beautiful as they are, they're adorned with loving people, memorable experiences, valued possessions. We understand that these gardens are as wondrous and as wonderful as it can get. God has been very good to us. We also understand there are vines out there and how they ever so subtly creep in. The temptations to be overly scared. They creep in and say you should be more anxious. They creep in and say you should be apathetic or hopeless or insular. The creeping vines, the threats and nuisances that are just part of human existence. I bring up our spruce tree because we all know this beauty. I bring up the kudzo vine because we all know the threats that scare us. And so we're given the perspective that as beautiful as the garden is, needs constant attention. This is our job. It's to fight against those temptations of selfishness, of greed, of anger, of judgmentalism, of isolationism and myopathy. We are among a crew of gardeners and choppers and cutters who regularly prune back these invasive vines. Earlier I asked, which will win out the garden? The spruce tree or the kudzo vine? Which is gonna dominate the backyard? Or whichever one I want. We have control over this. We serve a God who's given us a free will to do ill and to do good. So let's do good by tending the garden. We decide what should grow, whichever we feed, whichever we tend, whichever we pay attention to. So what are we paying attention to? Because cutting back the kudzo is our challenge and our calling. We need to be relentless and dedicated to our focus on God and God's purposes. For our God is a God of encouragement, love, hope, peace, joy. And that means cultivating these good things we need to fight this good fight. We take a cue from the life of Jesus. Jesus dedicated himself, I like to say, to four things. To prayer, to scripture, to godly influences, and to acts of service. This is an example Jesus left us. Prayer, scripture, godly influences, acts of service. Well, since New Year's is a time of resolutions and today's New, New, Year's, New Year's Day, how about resolving to take our walk with God to the next level? What does walking with God to the next level look like to you? As part of our baptismal liturgy, all of us renew our baptismal promises. Can we use this to make these four resolutions? First, what can we do to grow in prayer? Can we take walks to talk with God more often? Write a journal, detail our impressions, our intuitions about how we see God leading us, God, what we see God telling us. Religious or not, great creative minds often speak of alone time and creativity, even guidance from outside of themselves. I know some of you use the prayer hand to help you remember five aspects of prayer, confession, petition, intercession, thanksgiving, and praise the five fingers of prayer, confession, regularly taking stock of our behavior and repenting of our sins, petition, which many of us were doing during the Lions Thanksgiving Day, Day game. Lord, help that team. Intercession, prayer on behalf of others. Thanksgiving, prayers of gratitude for all of God's gifts. 
and praise, prayers of adoration and love to God. What can we do to grow in prayer? Second, is New Year's a time to make more room for scripture in our lives? What does that look like? Maybe picking up a Bible that would be easy to read or one to listen to, or a Bible reading schedule you can live with, or even Bible verses on flashcards on the kitchen table, whatever works. Third, are we being called to guard more closely the influences around us? We are who we hang out with. We are who we watch. We are what we listen to. It creeps in like the kudzo vine. The ways we allow those not so godly influences to affect us. How can we better safeguard the influences we allow around us? Anybody see the news this week uh, out of Australia? Did you see the Australian government has uh, made social media illegal for those under the age of 16? In some profound ways, this is a grand statement on the importance of self-safeguarding what we allow to influence us because it can affect us in negative ways. And fourth, how could we better resolve to help others? Can we listen better? Can we be more mindful of those in our circles of influence? It doesn't have to be a big grand dedication to tutoring or food pantry volunteering, but it's an increased mindfulness of the people God has placed around us. How can we brighten their worlds? Friends, Jesus is clear on two things this morning. First, the end of days will come, and it'll be chaotic and scary for some. No one knows when. Second, however and whenever our end comes, Jesus warns, losing our wits, our perspectives, our closeness, our chosenness as God's valuable and irreplaceable partners in this enterprise called life, that's out of the question. Be on guard. Let your hearts not be weighed down. Be alert. Stay true. Use the impending in the immediate and draw nearer to God. Hold fast. Keep the faith. We're on the winning side when we're on God's side. Amen. I invite you to please stand, and in your bulletins is the uh, baptismal covenant, and so let us use this occasion on the first Sunday in Advent, and to be in camaraderie with those who will be baptized today, to commit ourselves to Christ and to renew our baptismal covenant. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? Do you believe in God the Father? I, I believe, believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and with the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. Let us now pray for Sylvia, Jennifer, Brooklyn, and Charlie, who are to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world and witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that these candidates who are baptized in the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I bet you got some announcements for us there. Yes, I do. Quite a few announcements. Good morning, everyone, and welcome once again. We're so happy to see so many of you here for um, our first Sunday in Advent and the Sunday after Thanksgiving. When I drop the pumpkin pie and put a hole in the pan, but everything worked out okay, I just used a pumpkin patch. Oh. Come join us for coffee, snacks, and fellowship after church. Um, after our 10 o'clock service, we'll have our fall book discussion on our book of the season, White Poverty, by William Barber. Our moderator is Dr. Ivy Forsyth Brown, a University of Michigan socialist, sociologist, sorry, join us after the 10 a.m. service in the parish hall. Anyone want to join Father Chris this Wednesday and drive to Lansing to lobby for gun safety? It's called Lobby Day for Gun Safety, when hundreds of people from across Michigan will join in asking our legislators to pass common sense firearm legislation. See Father Chris for details. Father Chris, is your car big enough? Uh, so far, no. Um, we've had more signups, and so uh, we may be taking more than one. Okay. Coming next Sunday, St. Nicholas will be here. Come be with us as we prepare for the Christmas feast. Hours for our Christmas services are in your bulletins. Don't forget to stop by the mitten tree this holiday season. Bring in your gloves and scarves during the season, and we'll make sure to distribute them to needy families through our food pantry. Thanks to the Daughters of the King, our women's prayer team, for taking on this important ministry. And as we've mentioned, it's stewardship season. Our theme is to walk in love, and we're charting our progress on the East Wall. Each pledge gets, up, get, gets us a step closer. I can't even begin to thank you for your contributions to St. David's. This parish has had an indescribable good effect on my life. Make sure to grab your free Advent devotional booklet as you leave church today. They're on the back table in the narthex, and this year's booklet is called Living Well Through Advent, Practicing Peace. Let's walk through this holy season together in peace. And we hope you'll stay connected with us all week. If you're joining us online, please head to the St. David's website to sign our virtual guest book, or follow the link if it's been put in the chat box. Those of you with the bulletin can scan the QR code on the back cover to sign our guest book. Also, you can subscribe to our podcast, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube channels. And if you're new with us, stop by the Ministry Hub at the atrium. We want to give you a special gift and welcome you to our family. God bless you. Thank you so much, Felicity. Friends, I invite you to please stand for our Eucharistic prayer. 
Here in this holy, quiet season of preparation, may our hearts, O oh Lord, be open to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, God of David, for your faithfulness is steadfast, and your mercy has been from of old. You draw your people to you with your promise of salvation, and every promise you make in your goodness you fulfill. From the house of David, you raised up your Messiah to restore Judah and to herald that your deliverance was here. In your son's righteousness, we find our life. For his righteousness was more than enough for your people who had yearned so long for redemption, who had trusted so long in your grace. Truly in his righteousness is fulfilled every hope of salvation in every generation. By his death, we can stand justified before you, and through his resurrection, we can share your holy life forever. And so with angels and archangels, we praise your name, joining the company of heaven in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. God of glory, for whose coming we wait, make this meal we share a sign that our redemption draws near. Send your Holy Spirit upon your church. Strengthen our hearts in all holiness that we may be heralds of your kingdom. By your same spirit, sanctify this bread and this cup, that they may be for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who had supper with his disciples, took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance After supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, for the remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. God of power, you have promised to make your way to us. Come quickly to those who wait for you. Raise up every head that is bent low in sin. Lift up every heart that is bowed down in shame. Uphold every soul that is made heavy by oppression. Inspire every weary throat to sing of the day when justice and mercy meet. Bring us through all that is passing away to the life that shall never pass away. When every eye shall be lifted up to gaze upon your Son in everlasting glory with all your saints, and then when the redemption for which we have longed shall forever be ours in the company of your Son and the power of your Spirit, Holy Father, Blessed Trinity, Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God and the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
journey to our post-communion prayer. Together, let us pray. In gratitude, in deep gratitude, for this moment, this meal, these people, we give ourselves to you. Take us out to live as changed people, because we have shared the living bread and cannot remain the same. Ask much of us, expect more from us, encourage many through us, so Lord, may we live to your glory, both as inhabitants of earth and citizens of the commonwealth of heaven. Amen. And now my brothers and sisters, as we go, go now and let the Lord steer you in the word of truth. Be on your guard so that you will not be caught up in the trivialities and anxieties of the world. Be alert at all times and pray for strength to escape the traps that will keep you from good. And may God make you increase in love for one another. May Christ Jesus teach you how to live in God's ways. And may the Holy Spirit strengthen your hearts in holiness as you ready yourself for the coming of the Lord. Amen. Let us go forth into the world to love and serve God and Mary.